and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be doing more preparation for the fuel tanks. Uh, as you see here, I'm working on the Z attach brackets, and I'm working on both the left and right tank components at the same time, trying to get all the prep work done for both tanks. I figure since I'm doing it for one, might as well do it for both. And that way, when I get ready to do the right tank, it'll be just a matter of doing all the work that's done inside the cradle. So going through and uh, final drilling the holes for all the Z brackets, these are the parts where um, you're going to attach nut plates. And so you've got a couple different sizes that you final drill and then deburr and, and get everything uh, ready for final before you start finally uh, assembling everything. And that's what I'm doing here. And then it has you countersink uh, the flange where the uh, rivets are going to go to hold the nut plates in place. And that's what I'm getting ready to do here. The thing you want to do is find a piece of 2x4 or something that's solid, which is what I've done. And then I just simply clamped it to the piece of wood and uh, use the drill press. It makes it really quick and easy and uh, makes for a, a good platform to to get a good countersink on. Um, and I think, if I recall correctly, this might have been a point um, that, yeah, like I said, you're gonna uh, countersink both, both holes for each nut plate. So there's six holes you're gonna countersink and there's a good number of, of brackets. So it's kind of repetitive, but it goes by pretty quickly once you get, it every, you get everything set up. There's a lot, of, a lot of prep work. There's a lot of pieces that you cut, a lot of pieces that you uh, kind of mold together, and it's, it takes quite a bit of, of, of work to get through the various pieces that you, you prepare. Um, at the moment, I, I just assembled the uh, left fuel tank just to kind of dry fit everything and make sure everything works. And then I masked, used, used uh, painter's tape to mask out the locations of all the ribs. I'm at the point where I have to scuff the skins and the mating surface on, on the ribs to get ready for putting in Pro Seal. I, I would guess probably about... I'm probably about 10 hours into uh, the left tank in, in all the prep work and getting to where I'm at. I've probably put about a total of 10 hours into these tanks. There are some folks who have mentioned that they've spent over 100 hours on a tank. And we'll see. I, I don't know that it'll take me that long per tank. Um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it, it you know that someone has put that many hours into making their tanks. But you know, maybe I'm just not doing enough prep, although it seems like it's a lot. So I know that uh, as I was putting the ribs and the skins together for the first time, it's, it's a pain. It, it was not an easy go. Um, the skins just did not want to wrap around the forward end of the, of the ribs, and it took a lot of, of manipulation. So what I think I'm going to end up doing when I get to the point of putting in Pro Seal is attaching all of the ribs in place and basically assembling the whole thing so that the uh, ribs are holding the form correctly and then just take out one rib at a time and then Clico it back in place once I put lay the Pro Seal down and then once it's Clicoed in place pull the Clicos out for the next one. It's going to be a bit of a hassle being that you have a limited time frame with the Pro Seal, but that's that's the only way I can see going forward. It just like I said, it was a it was a pain trying to get the skins to to form uh, along the ribs correctly. So that'll be uh, here in the new future. I, I got to get some more Pro Seal on order and get it here. I've got. Uh, one tube, but I think I'm going to need at least a second, if not third tube, um, to, to get everything going. So anyway, so like I said, continuing on with the Z brackets here, uh, deburring the holes, getting all the, uh, the straight edges and all that, um, 
rounded off and and uh, the rest of the D-ring action. Now, the uh, the next step is, like I said, putting in the next the the nut plates, and it's just a matter of there's three nut plates per bracket, and you just squeeze the uh, rivets into each bracket, make sure it's lined up and everything. It's a fairly easy process, but you definitely want to make sure that your uh, the the rivet is set correctly and it's it's not sitting too high. Um, I had to do, I think, one or two of them over again, and I had to re-countersink the holes. They weren't quite deep enough, and so the, the rivet head stuck up just enough to where it would catch your, your thumbnail. Um, but again, you want to make sure all of these are, are flat, and, uh, and, and, and if not, just it's a simple step of removing it and correcting the, uh, the countersink. So as I've said before, at some point, I'm going to have to get a portable AC unit for the garage. It's uh, already reaching over 100 degrees outside, and it's projected to get to about 110 by this next weekend. And uh, I don't think it's going to go back below the double or triple digits anytime soon after. So I've been looking at a couple different swamp coolers or something to, to throw in a garage so that it makes it bearable out there it's it's gonna get hot so now this step uh, through the magic of editing I've uh, deleted a lot of the repetitive steps of, of uh, getting the nut plates installed into the Z bracket so now I'm working on the J stiffener for the tanks this is the J stiffener, uh, J stiffener that goes on the top skin and uh, we'll go in you know uh, in between the ribs along the whole length of the of the fuel tank. So it has you cut out uh, cut one piece. I believe it's to 54 inches long, and then uh, it has it gives you dimensions to put the first hole uh, to drill the first hole, and then from there you essentially measure out the center line and draw a center line down the entire length. And what you end up doing is um, you clico the one hole that you put in onto the skin and then you use the holes in the tank skin to uh, final drill all of the holes in the rest of the bracket. Now my pieces they had a slight curve to them so I had to when I was drawing out the center line had to be mindful of that but also as I was riveting or uh, as I was drilling through you know using these skins to final rivet or final drill the holes for the stiffener, I had to make sure that I was holding the stiffener just right so you see the center line mark in the holes that you're about to, to, to drill through. So just be mindful of that as you're working on this, that you keep that in mind um, to, to make sure that you're drilling the holes correctly and you try to keep it as straight as possible. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and let this video run out here and uh, get back out in the garage and do some more work on these fuel tanks. Again, I appreciate those that keep watching, and we'll see you next time around.